G'day everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday morning's message on our church YouTube channel. Which reminds me, please remember to uh, subscribe to our channel if uh, you haven't already, and click on the bell icon. And that way you'll be notified uh, whenever we post or upload any new content. So this morning's message will be presented by Reverend Johnson McCotty. And uh, Johnson will again be looking at the Emmaus Road text from Luke 24, but this time from a different perspective. So let's begin in prayer. Loving Father in heaven, thank you for your everlasting kindness towards us. In you we live and breathe and have our being. Even more so than for the sparrows, you provide for our every need. And so we thank you for that. Father, we are living in an unprecedented season. Never before have any of us experienced a worldwide pandemic. For many people, this has given rise to so much despair and fear in their lives. It should not be that way for us as believers. You love us and you care for us. Even the hairs on our head are numbered. But Lord, we confess that we don't always live as if these things are true. And so for this we declare that we are sorry. Help us to draw near to you. Let us immerse ourselves in your presence and rejoice in your promises to us. And they are so many. Holy Spirit, we are encouraged by the words of the prophet Isaiah who in chapter 26 and verses 19 to 20, you inspired to write, But your dead will live, Lord, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. Lord, these words testify powerfully to a yet future event when you will return for your church, and we will be given new incorruptible bodies. Those who are dead in Christ will be resurrected with these same kind of bodies, and all of this was proclaimed as true when you yourself, the first fruits, rose from the grave never to die again. And if we are saved, Calling upon the name of Jesus, this is our future and our hope also. Indeed, this is the blessed hope that we cling to, especially in these days of trouble and uncertainty. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we are comforted by your presence. And you assure us that all those things that were written by the prophets have and will come to pass. And so with these words, and with many other passages of Scripture, we are encouraged, and we are given hope to walk in this blessed life that we have been called to. In your powerful name we pray, Lord. Amen. So before Johnson brings us the message this morning, let's rehearse again the text recorded by Luke regarding the Emmaus Road experience. Luke 24, 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. 
And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. And now, here's Johnson with today's message. Morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, midweek service. The reading from the book of Luke, chapter 24. And uh, my theme for this morning service is Second Sight. Second sight. This past month alone, I noticed at least 20 things I never noticed before around the area that I live. I saw a mama bed protecting a baby in the tree in our garden. I met neighbors I never saw before. I took walks, runs, and noticed new birds, types of trees, and found countless new places driving about in and around our town. The list can go on and on. I also noticed new things about myself, my likes and dislikes, and about others around me, especially at places such as the grocery store. I notice the way people are creating their own style of mask, some colorful, some plain. I notice the way people I never met say hello, just to connect with another human being. I notice how food tastes especially good when it is scarce to get hold of. We value things more than we pay closer attention to them. Right now in our world, it's as though COVID-19 has enabled us to take a closer look at everything and everyone differently. For some it has meant finding more to critique. For many, however, it has meant finding more to cherish about our communities and relationships. Paying more attention to the little things, realizing that little things matter. And that is very important for us to know. Often, as human beings, we can get streamlined into seeing only one way, seeing only certain people, seeing only from one perspective, as though we owe we a certain prescription of glasses for the way we view the world and each other. We all view the world through our own unique lenses. Like any lenses, it is selective. It helps us to view things in the way we are used to seeing them. If you wear glasses or contact lenses like me, 
Think of how the world looks different when you have them off. You feel you can't see things clearly. For some, you may not notice things look blurry or a stranger. For those glasses back on and the world comes into focus, just put them back on now and you see things different again. However, one day you go to the open mysteries and discover that you haven't been seen as well as you thought you were. The doctor changes the lenses and suddenly things come into a sharper view. You notice things you were missing, the world as you see it, it changes. Every view of our world from our eyes is prescriptive. Our prescriptive is prescriptive, so to speak. When we change our prescription, it changes our entire view and sometimes our viewpoint. That's in a sense what happens to us psychologically too when we go through a trauma or a significant change. It's as though our prescription changed and suddenly we see the world through a new lenses. For some it may bring new things to light, but for others that trauma may create dark spots blind spots in our vision. The trauma that is caused by coronavirus is going to live with people for a long time. Not only is it going to live with people for a long time, but it has changed the way they see the world. It will never be the same. It takes a new and significant kind of shift to return our vision to its former perspective, or better yet, to an improved and healthier perspective. In our scripture for today, Two disciples of Jesus are walking along a road that led from Jerusalem area to Emmaus. They had no doubt witnessed Jesus' crucifixion and had spent time with the inner circle hiding out still in Jerusalem. They had sympathized with them about the loss of their leader and the destruction of their hope. Downtrodden and discouraged, they were returning home to resume their what they imagined would be a different life without Jesus. A different life without the, the person who had given them hope. Their grief allowed them in that moment a narrow lenses. All they could see was blue and gray. They were sad. They were downhearted. They were convinced that life had lost its color. Their hope for a more beautiful world was dashed as they stayed at the ground, kicking at the dust as they walked, they barely noticed the stranger coming up beside them. They could not see the stranger. Consumed in their grief, they hardly gave him a glance. When he asked them what was wrong, they were surprised. Who would have known about the loss of their assumed Messiah and the devastation of their mission? And that's why they thought he was a stranger talking to them. Even as he talked to them about the scriptures, the foreshadowing of Jesus' death and the resurrection, they were so overwhelmed in their grief. And all they could see was the road. All they could hear was the drone of his voice. They could not even see him. Only when they reached their home and he sat with them and broke bread with them, where their eyes opened as they looked up and they saw his face, his hands, his eyes, his broken body sitting before them, holding the bread of life that he had promised. Did they see him for the very first time? Only did, then did they recognize who truly he was. But before that, they could not. They could not. Prayer, scriptures, Talking, walking, all of this held their minds to cope. But only when their eyes met his did their vision change. The truth of Jesus' resurrection only true, truly gets into our hearts and shifts our perspective and our vision when we enter into relationship, personal relationship with him. When we enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, when we now converse face to face, eye to eye, we can know Jesus through reading, through thinking through our minds. We can learn about him and theologize concerning him. These things help us to learn to prepare us to meet him. 
But only in a personal encounter with Jesus, we will come to a place where our hearts shifts and we see him in front of us. He is here in front of us. Jesus is with us. After the two experiences, that encounter with the risen Lord, they realized their hearts had in fact been burning as was telling them about the scriptures. Those scriptures were the new lens that Jesus needed to give them in order to prepare them to look at him with eyes that could see and to hear him with ears that could hear. It is through hearing the scriptures that your perspective can be changed. Irregardless of you being a Christian for a long time, I remember John Wesley going to order guest meeting in the evening. It was through hearing the word of God that he felt his heart strangely warm and he was changed from that moment. And we need to know. In the medical field, our vision can actually improve as we age. This is a result of increasing refractivity of the nucleus of the lens which causes more fear. Whereas you have had rather strong lenses before, as your vision changes, your prescription may improve and you may see better than you did before, requiring new lenses to bring the world in sharper focus again. Doctors call this phenomenon second sight. It is essentially a new set of eyes resulting from the natural cause of aging a new set of eyes requires a new set of lenses. And that is very important for us to know. I think that we can develop a new set of eyes as the years go by in our discipleship too. A second sight. That enables us to weather the storms of the world and see Jesus appearing to us in ways we may have missed. But that second sight to, to desires a new lenses. That lens is the scripture. The lenses I'm talking about is the scripture. Like our physical eyes, our spiritual eyes can become complacent. Our aging eyes can become blurry, single focused. We can get used to the way we see the world and not even notice that our vision is falling. We can get used to the way we see things look and feel in our world and in our lives and relationships and fail to notice when we are missing things in our line of vision. When we adjust our lenses by reading the scriptures, by allowing the scripture to test our way of seeing, we can bring Jesus into focus again in new ways and in living color. Just as we have a responsibility to check our physical eyes, we also have a responsibility to check our spiritual eyes. Through our lives, as we go through adventures, traumas, experience of life, we constantly need to check our lenses in order to make sure we are seeing everything we could see being seen as clear as we can. So we need vision checks and hearing checks to make sure we are truly seeing what Jesus needs us to see and hear. Only when we use those scriptural lenses to view the world, Will Jesus, while the people and things we experience come into a new focus, provide us with new meaning? We start to see things differently. We start to see life differently as long as we read the Bible and listen to the scriptures, listen to what Jesus is saying. So the scriptures are a kind of eye test, a set of adjusting lenses for us. When we read the scriptures, we fit ourselves with a new kind of lenses in which to view Jesus. No matter how many times we read them or hear them, something new will appear that you never noticed before. I've preached on this text several times in my ministry. But today this message is quite different from the, all the messages I've preached upon. Why? Because when I read the scriptures, a new revelation comes in. I see the scriptures differently. God reveals them to me differently. So that when I preach, it's a new message to anyone who hears it. They give us a kind of second sight. Equipped with this new second sight, we are able to come into relation with Jesus with eyes to see him. But only if you raise your eyes and look, are you able to do that? I know of a young girl. 
We needed glasses to see the blackboard in school. I know of me, especially my wife. Her sight was deteriorating. But she had these glasses she had never to put on. And I sometimes ask her, why, why are you not putting on? But you're struggling. You're saying you can't see things, but you are not putting on your glasses. Maybe she's embarrassed about wearing her glasses. She refused to put them. And so she continued to see only first group of symbols. Instead of truly seeing the lessons she needed to learn that would change her perspective about her world and herself. I've seen a lot of people sometimes, they say we can't see things and even, even on the projector. And yes, they want to see very far away from the board instead of sitting closer if their eyesight is giving them problem so that we can see clearly. And that is what we are calling people. So that we, we, I'm, I'm saying you need to come closer. You need to put the lenses that makes you see clearly. Many of us Christians go through life just that way. We continue to see only an outline or a form of Jesus instead of seeing him and encountering him in a way that allows him to change us and move our discipleship forward into a new kind of hope. And that is why the scriptures are pointing to a second sign. This week, I challenge you to read the scriptures. Read them as you never before. Read the scriptures. Make reading the scriptures a regular part of your day. I will be willing to bet that it will change your vision about Jesus. About yourself, about your relationship, and about your world. Read the scriptures. Just take the Bible. Read the word of God and you'll see that you will never see things the same way. Things will change. Especially this period of coronavirus. Read the word of God. It will change you. It will change you definitely. Make it a habit that wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you can listen or read the word of God. It is this time that we need the word of God to help us to change our view, to change our worldview, to change the way we think. We have been seeing things. I know that maybe some of you have been reading the Bible. And I know if you read the Bible, you'll never be the same. You'll be a changed person. May the good Lord bless you. As you continue to journey, when you receive this second sight, I know your life will never be the same. You'll be on fire for Jesus. When the disciples on the journey to Emmaus, when they saw Jesus at last, they were on fire. They didn't stay there. They ran back to Jerusalem to tell others to say he's risen. And that is what I expect from you. You'll be on fire for Christ. You'll be telling everyone, everywhere you go, your talk is about Jesus. Because he's done something in your life. You are able to see him differently. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you come out to meet us where we are. We thank you that you walk the road with us, that you treat us as an equal even when we fail to recognize you. We always love us. You always care for us. Always want to eat and drink with us. Such is your love. We worship you and we adore you. Thank you, Lord. That you are not a stranger, but our friend. We worship and adore you, Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may it continue to abide with us, throughout the week remembering that Jesus is the only one who can provide us with second sight in Jesus name amen <laughs>